Hey, Shad here with SpeedX, fast growing gear site on the web and your source for Simpson helmets. In today's video, we are gonna unbox the Simpson Mod Bandit. Before we jump in and tell you all about this Simpson Mod Bandit, go ahead and subscribe for me. That helps us keep bringing you the best gear reviews in the universe. And if at any point you decide, hey, I'd like to purchase a Simpson helmet from those guys over at speedaddicts.com, well, we'd appreciate that as well. And there's a link in the description below to shop for the Mod Bandit or any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure over at speedaddicts.com. So when it comes to Simpson, they started the company in 1959. They started out making drag race, parachutes, helmets, harnesses, you name it. Their motorcycle helmets though have really picked up steam the past decade. And we are stoked to be offering the full Simpson lineup here at speedaddicts.com. Now there's about five different models in the Simpson motorcycle helmet lineup, but the Mod Bandit is the only modular. And by modular, of course, I mean a flip up chin bar. They're also gonna kick you down with that drop down sun visor. So this helmet is a fiberglass composite shell, which means it's going to be lightweight. It also drives the price a little bit as opposed to a cheaper polycarbonate shell. So to get into a Mod Bandit, you're gonna have to shell out around 570 bucks at the moment, that is the MSRP. If you want the full carbon fiber jammy, that's gonna run you about eight bills. So that one's definitely uh, an upcharge but it's full carbon fiber, it looks sweet, and it's a few ounces lighter. The composite that you see before me is about three pounds, nine ounces, which is really lightweight for a modular helmet. A lot of modular helmets will run up into the four pounds or above uh, weight class because of the moving parts. There's added weight whenever you get into a modular helmet, you got the drop down sun visor, all those goodies kind of add up, but this thing coming in at that sub or like close to three and a half pound mark means it is pretty darn lightweight considering it's a modular. Again, DOT rated ECE 2205 certified. It's gonna be an intermediate oval fit at, in terms of the shape, and that's gonna fit most of the heads here in the United States. So when it comes to head shape, no surprises there. They're using two shell sizes to make up the entire size range from extra small to two extra large. Now that's gonna produce some inconsistent results for all of you. It's hard to recommend a one size fits all attack when it comes to fitting a Mod Bandit. In general, they do run large. How large kind of depends where you end up in the size range and how big your face is. A lot of times I have to round up because I have a bigger jaw, I have to round up a size in modular helmets to get them to close properly. But in general, this helmet runs big. You should round up a half, or sorry, round down a half to a full size. So if that Simpson sizing chart says to buy the 2X, the extra large is probably where you're gonna need to be and so on. So if the size chart says a medium, you should order a small and you should be good to go, especially after break-in. So we always say get the helmet to fit as snugly as possible without causing pain or discomfort over about 20 minutes in your living room. That's how we recommend you test it. Now, if you have a problem with fit, you should buy your next helmet at Speed Addicts and you'll get that no cost return guarantee. All you have to do to qualify is live in the lower 48 states, make sure the gear is brand new in original condition, and in a couple clicks, you get a free return label. You can exchange, get a refund, whatever you need to do, and uh, give us a shot on your next helmet purchase. You won't be sorry. Let's dig in, enough with my shameless, shameless plugs. Let's look a little bit closer at the Mod Bandit. So it is very Bandit-like. Has that drag race front end, which is what Simpson's known for, and those whisker grills right there that's gonna allow the airflow to come through. You also have the classic Simpson speed brow, although a little bit redesigned from the Mod Bandit. They've kind of lengthened that out and made it more of an arrow shape instead of like a, a half circle, but it still gives you that Simpson attitude. Let's start with ventilation. So down low, you notice you're gonna have two, uh, on the very front muzzle, you're gonna have two intakes as well as the whisker intakes these are switchable, unlike some of the older Simpson helmets. When you flip this around, you're gonna see a couple of switches way back in there. It's hard to see with this drop down visor in the way, uh, but there are switches in the chin bar to turn those vents on and off. So if you're riding in colder weather, your eyes are sensitive to air leaks or something like that, you can cut those off. Same up on the top, these intakes are totally switchable here. You have these crown intakes, and then you have a whole array of exhaust ventilation. So. Gone are the days of that straight spherical uh, old school design when it comes to those Simpson motorcycle helmets with almost no ventilation. They've decked you out with a full modern suite of uh, ventilation systems on this Mod Bandit, so it does flow 
quite a bit of air. And like I said, you can shut off the intakes and reduce that vacuum uh, ventilation that's pulling out the hot air and bringing in that cool air. When it comes to chin bar, that is actuated by a lever right here. You're just gonna pull out, pull it up, <clears throat> and there you go. If you wanna lock it out, you can by throwing that switch right there. That will keep this from coming down unintentionally. So if you wanna maybe ride at some lower speeds, although I don't recommend it because you're missing your face protection, uh, you can switch that up and so that it doesn't, doesn't move around on you. Let's unswitch that. Look at this face shield. So Simpson's always using a real thick three mil face shield. These are very sturdy and uh, they come in a variety of colors. So if you wanna get smoke, iridium, gold, silver, you name it, they have all those sold separately. You're also going to notice that this is pin lock ready. The pin lock insert is not included. They should do that at this price point if I was gonna make a nitpick there. What a pin lock insert is, in case you're not familiar, that is a lens that inserts on the inside of the face shield, creating a dual pane system to reduce or mitigate fog. So if fog is an issue for you, these shields are not fog treated like some of the older Simpson shields. Instead, they're relying on that pin lock and you're gonna need to shell out some money for that separately. When it comes to changing the shield, they have the spinny dial that has a little lock. So you depress this little tab right here and then you turn it. Now it's important that you turn it the right way. If you look very closely, one size has a C, one size has an O. If you wanna open, turn it towards the O. If you wanna close it, turn it towards the C. If you mix those up and force it, you will break it, jam it, and be very unhappy because it's just, I've, I've helped folks here uh, in our retail location deal with that once they've jammed one of these up. It's a beast and uh, it'll wear out your fingers real quick. So pay close attention that you're turning it the right way and that you have this little tab depressed before you start spinning it. Now, if you do it correctly, it's a breeze. These things come off really easy and I'm gonna tempt fate here by doing it on camera. I'm gonna turn it, whoops, towards the open direction, which on this side is forward. There we go. And it comes right off. After that, it's all downhill. And then when you put it on, you need to put it on the same position that you took it off with. In this case, on your right side, the letters are facing towards the face shield. And then we're gonna spin it back so that they're up on the top and it locks so it won't come off on the road and you're dialed in. That's how the face shield works. The internal sunshade is deployed with the left side deployment lever right here. You are going to get this configuration that you see before me, a clear exterior, a smoked interior. If you wanna mix it up, you have options, like I said before, for the exterior, same with the interior. If you want a clear or a different option, I think they have amber and a few different colors, you're welcome to purchase those separately and switch them out. I will say when it comes to switching out interior sun visors, it can get dicey, you can break them, you can ruin them. I wouldn't recommend doing it frequently, not just on the Simpson, but basically any other helmet. I would get something that you like, don't count it on switching on the road all the time because you can break tabs and cause problems there. I like the placement of the sun visor deployment, it is up and out of the way of the comm system, unlike the Ghost Bandit. The Ghost Bandit uh, has the slider down low, makes it hard for the comm system mount. You have to mount it way far back. Not here. Comm systems on the Mod Bandit are breeze. I've installed them personally more than once. Very simple install, plenty of room to work when it comes to that. Let's flip this around. You can see the whole profile. Really good looking helmet. It's got all that Simpson DNA in it. And now it's time to jump inside of the Mod Bandit. <clears throat> You're gonna notice a few things right off the bat. First thing is that chin curtain. This is removable. If you don't like riding with chin curtains, you can remove it, but it will reduce noise and wind that's coming up inside of the helmet. The chin strap is a double D ring. A lot of modular helmets these days, touring helmets, they will go to that quick release for convenience, but Simpson has kept it old school with the tried and true D ring closure. We're gonna move those out of the way and then we're gonna to get to removing the cheek pads. They are held in place by a few snaps. One, two, three snaps. They have a fair bit of low density foam. You notice the pinholes so that the audio from the speaker pocket can get into your ear holes. Down on the bottom, this is the neck roll. They've included a little bit of a reflector here that's gonna be visible as someone approaches from behind. That never hurts. Let's go ahead and move these bottom ones. There's your other cheek pad. Okay, now that we have this open and out of the way, I'm gonna show you those speaker pockets I was talking about. There they are. You even have a little channel to uh, run your wires and get them out of the way. So comm systems, 
No problem here in the Mod Bandit. We're gonna remove these uh, comfort liner. The, remo the washable, removable liners are antimicrobial, so uh, should help them keep from getting funky. The headliner itself, you have plastic plastic in the forehead area. There are no snaps to run into your temples. On the back, they do have a few snaps, but uh, they didn't really become an issue for me. Otherwise, 3D matte foam. This thing looks quite a bit like the Ghost Bandit liner, except they've added just a little bit of this mesh material, but uh, you should get plenty of airflow through this guy to keep you nice and cool. They are using a multi-density EPS. Welcome to the future, Simpson. A lot of their older helmets would go single density and uh, multi-density performs better in a larger variety of impact scenarios. So that is what the EPS in here looks like. Now you're gonna notice channels and ports. That's meant to work well with that updated array of intakes and exhaust ports on the Mod Bandit and get that air flowing nice and uh, fresh through this helmet. Last thing, let's see this uh, underneath here like I showed you before. These are the switches for those intakes on the chin bar area. All the, uh, the mechanisms that are doing the heavy lifting inside of the actual chin bar itself are all metal. They want you to know that. So they are meant to take impacts and protect your mug. That's what it's all about. That's why a lot of people are moving over to Simpson from maybe a half shell. We get a lot of metric cruisers, Harley Davidson guys, tired of wearing a half shell or no helmet at all. They want a little bit more protection. And the Mod Bandit's gonna give you that freedom of riding with the open face and that full face protection all in one nice package here. You're gonna get a one year warranty from Simpson, which I think is a little bit light to be honest in this price range. I would like to see a little bit longer warranty to protect such an investment. You're talking close to 600 bucks or even more for that carbon. So that is one last nitpick I might have. Otherwise, real nice offering. Now, if there's a question I didn't answer for you, no worries, rider support is standing by at speedaddicts.com to help you out through phones, live chat, or emails. And of course, if you already got a Mod Bandit, let us know how you like it in the comment section below. Appreciate you all for watching. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.